Uh, Cloud9 always wanting to challenge for the top spots in the LCS here, coming in as the third seed from North America. DFM, of course, the first and only seed from the LJL from Japan. And there is the Talon ban alongside that. Lucian's going to get taken out of the pool here by C9. Twisted Fate, Syndra, and Scion removed by DFM. Yeah, interesting bans coming out here. Lee Sin, still a champion that's up and available, something we've seen be heavy prioritized. Misfortune as well, the likes of that. Trindamir, I still want to mention him, not the, the, the fact that I think that these are the two teams that would bring him out um, just because, well, Perks himself has been one of these players that, you know, you see the Twisted Fate band, you also think of the Rise. It's about getting that mid lane priority and excelling that pressure. And the same can be said for Aria. We just saw him on the LeBlanc. So seems like Lee Sin is going to be the name of the game and is going to be taking out. It does leave Steel and Sao open if that's something they want to prioritize heavily in the early game. It's definitely something he could look at alongside that. Things like that, Diana, even his Nidalee. Both he and Blabber, well-known Nidalee players in their respective regions. Irelia still available for Good these catch. two teams as well. Let's see where DFM decide to go. Do you pick something like the Irelia or do you say Aria? Unkilled in summer, unkilled at Worlds on LeBlanc against Perks, who also hasn't been beaten on LeBlanc in summer. Well, there you go. So this is, uh, it's quite the big matchup we've got ahead of us here coming into this one. And a chance perhaps for Cloud9 to finally give Aria his first death on LeBlanc, not only this summer, but in Worlds as well here. Now we did just briefly talk about this Trindamir, but obviously we don't talk about Hovers. Instead, let's talk about the Misfortune that once again gets locked in. We We've already talked about it earlier, but in general, one of the most popular, actually the most popular AD carry right now. It works so well with a number of combinations in the bottom lane, specifically engage, supports Vulcan, very good at those. There's the Kiana for Blabber, so he'll be piloting her. Of course, didn't really see much play across the course of summer, hasn't played it in summer 2021 in the LCS. Yes, yeah, so one of these new champions coming in, we've seen a lot of success with the Kiana, does fairly well, or actually really excellent around the skirmishes, around the jungle with the heavy uh, terrain coming out, specifically in the former game where oh, Rosa had a mountain. so summer. hopeful. Yeah, I mean, I didn't want to talk about it. We saw the hubber. If you don't know, uh, Steel has played four games of Shaku in the regular season and is actually one of his champions that he does like to bring out. Instead, we get to see him on his most played champion, the Sensao and Ebi, on his most comfort pick, the Nar coming into this one as well. It's interesting to see DFM put so much focus on their top side of the map and leave bot side for the second rotation here, especially since you know you're playing into MF. Cloud9 also now have picked up the Silas, so they still have their support and top laners pick, but DFM might want to focus some top lane bans here to try and sort of pinch Fudge's pool. I completely agree. And you know what? The desk medic, they quickly touched on it as well. The fact that Ebi's champion pool from what we've seen is not that big. He yeah. has a lot of, he has these few champions he plays and he plays them really well. So securing them the, this early in the draft is also something we saw in the playoffs of LGL where they didn't want to go for these early Varus uh, that we saw a lot of the other regions. They just much rather would have Ebi on the NAR because they know how much of a comfort this is to him. For the moment, though, it's C9 are going to focus some bands towards that AD carry role. Utapon will not get the Ezreal alongside that. Things like the Aphelios is very good at. Uh, Varus, you know, all these traditional, typical AD carries that currently sit in the meta. Rakan banned away from Vulcan. No real surprises there. C9 could have first picked it and then counter picked, well, finally picked their top laner as the last selection in this draft. Because that that's the big question here. What's your biggest threat? Is it the Amumu and the Leona that, to come through? Or is it actually these top laners in response to to Ebi and from how he's going right now, Medic, it seems like they don't really care all too much about what Fudge will pick and would much rather try and diminish some of the supports that could come out to help this misfortune. Yeah, I mean, Volk are very well known for his Rakan play as well, so no real surprises that they wanted to make sure they didn't give away the Rakan alongside that bullet time, but now perhaps DFM will put a ban towards Fudge's direction. Instead, they will continue to remove those engaged supports away from Vulcan. The Amumu taken out. Now C9 expect them to pick their support here and save their top laner for last. Yeah, exactly. If Amumu is gone, well, then you just go for the Leona instead. And the team fighting already on Cloud9 is so incredibly scary. Um, you got the Misfortune. You got the Kiana. Silas, he's just going to steal away the Null ultimate. Uh, that's AP scaling as well. You jam him into a wall. Bam, you're just dead. And they're super uh, super massive follow-up as well from the Leona to come through. So last picks are coming through now. 
Jin is a champion that would be quite interesting to see as one of these champions that's more facilitating and not really one you play for too much. And also another thing is that he's super immobile. If he doesn't get that Gale Force ASAP, he's going to be a strong point to attack for Cloud9 because he's so immobile. Yeah, and you have so many long-range AoEs that yes. can hit onto him. You know, you've got the Leona with the Solar Flare. You've got Silas no. jumping in there as well. Alongside that, the MF Bullet Time can do so much work. Gang currently hovering over the Alistair. This is second most play through the course of summer, but it's not always the most powerful pick. We'll see if uh, DFM can make a move with the cow in the so bottom lane. The reason why I really don't like it in this instance is because Perks is playing Silas. Oh, yeah. That is a free Alistair ultimate that he can get for himself in these team fights. So if you're not using the Nar, you're just going to be using the Alistar. Get rid of the CFC from either Chain to come out from Arya and then just be a menace with the rest of your team. Uh, it is very rare that we see Alistar picked into Silas from yeah. this exchange. It's so difficult to, uh, to play into that Silas is so tanky has all that damage reduction final pick was a Rallya for Fudge in the top lane we talked about her at the start of the draft surprised to see her fall all the way through but as we said the FM wanted to focus support bands instead of those top lane bands so Fudge gets himself a very powerful playmaker up towards the top side of the map Cloud9 going into their first game at Worlds 2021 historically Probably the most successful North American org when it comes to Worlds, making semi-finals, quarter-finals, always making it out of planes. They are a very strong team, and expectations are they should top Group B. And this, perhaps, will be their biggest challenge on their way towards that. Galatasaray did look good against Beyond, and so you have to put them up there as well. But Detonation Focus Me have already beaten out Unicorns of Love, who made it into the knockout stage and into groups last year. And now Cloud9 in their first game of Worlds 2021 will have to take on the LJL. It's the level of play we talked about in this group. It's the fact that a lot of these teams are just so close in terms of how competitive they can be. And then moving into the map here once again, I think we have to highlight Detonation Focus Me in the early game. They quite often always have something finicky they wanted to do. We saw it early as well, where they anticipated an invade. They didn't necessarily go for anything, but they're always expecting something from the get-go. Looks like they're quite spread out here, so perhaps nothing going to happen. Gang actually Seems like it. porting back. I wonder if he's going to go and grab himself an Oracle's. Instead, yep, places the ward, grabs an Oracles, and that implies to me that Steel wants to start on the top side of the map, and Unipon and Gang will just work their way down towards the bottom lane. You're completely right, because if he starts towards the top side, if Blapper were to invade, they would get the early um, intel coming out from this one. And I actually wonder if this means that Steel wants to invade as well, just because usually having this intel would mean if you try to split the map, well, then you would at least know that the enemy jungle is also there. But oh, this is good anticipation. Cloud9, they're finally moving into this red buff. Really good early ward here if they want to commit to the full red buff, but they won't. They're just here to get their own scouting intel. They would know if he did the Raptors. So Cloud9 being proactive in the early game with the vision setup. Yeah, it definitely helps for Cloud9 to get some of that vision down. You can join in the conversation with Verizon 5G all chat. Send us a tweet and perhaps you'll be featured on the screen right in front of you. And we'll see, catch up with someone later on, see what their thoughts are on the rematch of MSI. Cloud9 historically 3-1 and one versus DFM, but that one perhaps more recent, perhaps more burned into the memories, especially of NA fans. So here's what's going to happen. Cloud9 bot lane deciding to leash Blapper here, moving up towards the top side, which means that Detonation Focus Me, they get to be first on the bottom wave, which in turn means they should have the early priority for this push down towards the bottom. Now, what is more crucial is the fact that Fush right now doing some excellent trading, and Blapper, he's pathing up towards this top side. Ebby already in a really bad position, and Steel, he's pathing down towards the bottom side. So when we reach that three to four minute mark, we might see some action in top lane. Yeah, Fudge continues to have a strong performance. It was back in MSI when he really was putting the team on his back in a lot of the games. You have to remember his Lee Sin, his kick, absolutely perfect positioning by him in a lot of those fights. And across the course of summer, he's continued to improve and continue to grow. You can see damage a minute going up, damage per gold going up, gold per minute going up. He continues to find these lane advantages and really sometimes shut down his opposing top laners. Well, he's already done that. You're two minutes into the game and he already got TP advantage. That means if this stacked wave 
is coming into the top lane and you decide to kill him and you get the kill he's going to be losing so much to cloud nine are they tempting the fate here are they going to risk the dive flawless duet goes wide ebby's able to jump away blabber still on the chase will land the route and fudge can continue to push forward but ebby is just forced all the way back towards his tier two the wave will crash and c9 oh, do no. not overextend but look at the difference already look at the cs medic yep. ebby he's got four it's the, oh, it's the second time in two games we've seen Ebby put behind in the early game. Don't know what you want me to say. He's weak side. He's a little shrimp. That's where the name comes from. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, Fez, you're, you're completely right about that one. And the attention from DFM has been put towards the bottom side instead. They're getting the bottom scuttle right now. But if you're not getting much more out of this situation, right, the early pathing by going down to the bottom side has to be questioned a little bit with Ebby now being put quite firmly behind. But it looks like with the bot lane priority, they're going for an early roam in the mid lane. This is something that Perks experienced the uh, the end of during playoffs as well in the LCS. Even though he received more attention from Blabber, more time around his mid laner, Perks still had a negative jungle proximity difference. So the enemy <laughs> was around him even more than Blabber was. And you can see shutting down Perks is a key part of beating C9. Up towards the top side, Ebby. His lane is put in a position where he needs someone to help him push this in, or else he's going to be stuck. And with Blapper making his way up here, this could be really dangerous from Ebby. Yeah, Flawless Stewart is going to land. Ebby's looking to try and get out of this one. Flash away from the wallop. Ebby does still have a flash of his own and will be able to escape. But it's still the fact that his lane state is so freaking bad. Yep. He can't walk up and drop the lane in, and Fudge can just keep his freeze going as Fudge does. Aria will flash away here early. Vulcan, though, with a flash follow. The Zenith Blade connects, and Perks is in there. Aria trying to dodge away, but First Blood goes over to Sven. The first time in summer that Aria has died on LeBlanc. Aria, he tried to be cheeky. He tried to troll them with the clone a little bit, tried to confuse them by moving the clone back towards its tower and himself into them. Didn't work out, still dies to the ignite, and I believe even an auto attack coming into it. It's actually interesting, Ari as well. His first half on the blank medic yep. this summer and this world's. Definitely is. <laughs> See it. Doesn't say too much about this world. I mean, it's, it's, like, it's the second game of Le Blanc at Worlds here. But of course, Perk's very experienced at playing at Le Blanc and playing into it. And I, what I did love there from Cloud9 was the proactivity on the map. We saw a play in the top side, and we also saw the bot lane moving up and making this play towards the mid lane as well. After pushing in the wave, they're like, okay, we can try and do more on the map right now. Great flash from Vulcan. And with the ignite ticking, it's actually a little bit easier to know which one is the right one. I actually think he might have been able to. No, I'm not too sure. But like the, the fact that he walked into the Yona W, really put him behind there and made sure that he would dive to that Ignite. On Cloud9, they still want to keep that proactivity and proximity going around the mid lane. And you can really see how much Perks is doing in this scenario. So with them being able to get the mid lane priority, they should be able to either start setting up this first Drake or start putting more vision up towards the top side where you can fret Eddie, Ebby. They're still in a pretty bad position. There's just so much focus on the mid lane in this game. Vulcan, Blava, and Perks all here. Gang getting chased out as well. Does have the flash. A Zenith Blade could chase him down, but he's going to get towards that bar. and uses the Zenith Blade and actually separates Vulcan from the rest of the team. But Unicorn is flank. overextended now as they look towards the bottom lane. Perks and Blava on their way. Vulcan will just get knocked into the wall there. Perhaps hoping you knock him away. Perks going underneath the tower as well and will be able to escape. All about how much these mid lanes can get out and about on the map and, and start impacting this matchup. And he's not even necessarily losing a lot by moving down here, Perks. The turret I mean, he, was he, pushed in, minion wave is now. CS down. It was just. I mean, he 20, was. He, he, what, what happened four minutes into the game? Was oh, that four true. members of DFM <laughs> forcing him away from the minion Very wave in mid? Yes, true. you even talked about the negative jungle proximity, so don't give me that now, <laughs> okay? Perks still doing a pretty decent job, and it's this individual level we usually see from Cloud9 knitting their leads. We, we're not really seeing it from Perks in the mid lane, but we're definitely seeing it from Fudge in the top side. Yeah, Fudge on a tear right now, 16 CS up. Of course, the early pressure from Blabber is going to help him out with that, but really 
has been able to continue to garner that lead for himself and Ebi stuck underneath his tower. No flash, no TP, no way of impacting the rest of the map. Here we go. I was going to say, it's the only thing I've been disappointed in by Cloud9 is the fact that they haven't tried to actually dive Ebi just yet, but Perks can steal away the now ultimate and just CC chain him on the tower. Eh, Mechanar is quite far away. I think they're going to go for this dive in the top side. The Blabber's on his way as well, but there is the Nar still on the way. Perks gets him against the wall, but doesn't get the stun for all. Duet still comes out, and goodbye, Ebi. Fudge and Perks secure the kill. I mean, he can't really do much. Is the stack wave pushing into him at best as Ebi? You just decide to give away the whole minion wave, and even if you do that, you're still in a really bad position. Fudge almost double the CS uh, eight minutes into the game here, and you can see the gold difference. 600 for Fudge with Ebi, who's almost got as much gold as Vulcan on the Leona. He's only got 200 more gold than the enemy support. Ebi has been shut down twice in two games right now, and DFM trying to find a, a way back into this right now because they're currently 1,300 gold behind only the eight-minute mark. And although DFM perhaps are dark horses are for the group, C9 is showing just how much their top side has improved across the course of summer. Since MSI, they've had more consistency out of Fudge. Blabber has been, although perhaps slightly worse, as you say, than Speaker in the LCS, still performing very well himself. And Perks, when he's able to team up with a strong top side, can just garner these advantages. I completely agree with you because I'm not seeing the same uncertainty. Yeah. I I'm still seeing some of that poor objective control in terms of they have a pretty good lead up towards the top side and they're not able to get the Rift Hell, but obviously it came down to the tempo after losing Ebi, they just recalled and then detonation focused me able to get the rift held but to go back to what you said yeah you're right it just feels like a more well-oiled machine here with cloud nine where i think beforehand i used to see some more inconsistencies yep. with them Definitely agree, and Blabber now is going to start up those objectives that you were talking about we see our verizon 5g all chat Riley Wofford, thank you very much for your conversation. Cloud9 have it's a huge team fight comp, but DFM have better solo dual comp. Depends on how the teams play, could go either way. Thank you for sharing your opinion. But right now, it seems like it's going very much one way, my friend. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the uh, solo duos are working out well for C9. It has, I mean, calling it like, you know, mid jungle pressure, which is what we usually talk about, the mid jungle 2v2, it's kind of disingenuous when it's the entire 5v5 mid-jungle top bot support 2v2. It's also the, that solo duel. I don't think it's Ebi versus Fudge he's talking about right here <laughs> because true, uh, true. that is definitely only going one way. And uh, that is up in the clouds for Cloud9 right here. Now down towards the bottom, Vulcan almost finding Utapun. And Cloud9, while this was going down, they pick up their first objective in the Mountain Soul. So despite us saying that, you know what, objective control, not really something they have. Well, they are building themselves. Some Drake stacking here in the early game for potential early. Oh. Okay. Vanguard just coming out from Fudge as he looks to trade on Ebi underneath the tower. Ebi tries to flash away, but Fudge solo kills the Nah. He will fall for it. But Fudge should be pretty happy with that. Looks like the wave will be in a neutral state or thereabouts in that lane anyway. So Fudge isn't going to lose too much. Yeah, well, at least Ebi finally got something. The fact that you're able to trade even there, super nice for you. Even blew the flash onto Fudge as well. So despite going down there, Still a fine position, and I actually think it's a bigger wave as soon as, as what I can see from the minimap that's pushing into Ebi. There you go, yeah, it's actually a huge oh, yeah. mini wave collapsing to Ebi, so he's not too sad about this one. Right, Ebi did have the TP if he wanted to get up here a little bit quicker, decides not to burn it. We'll see if he, well, he lost the cannon, he lost three Sucks. minions out of it, so not the best there for Ebi as the bullet time comes out. Vulcan going in, but Steel is here for a fray in the bottom side river. Vulcan still has a flash to walk away, and Udipon had to burn both his flash and his cleanse to get out of there, so DFM still unable to find something in what was a 2v3 for the first portion of that play. Yeah, what I'm looking for now for Cloud9, though, is that when these resets finally start to come through, you can see the top half of the map, uh, the camps are starting to respawn. And when you have priority on the rear, Aurelia, when you get perks back in the lane that does have TP, and you have the intel that Steel was down towards the bottom side, Cloud9 could be communicating right now that they want to start these skirmishes up towards the top side of the map, with Ebi now being in a poor position where he's slow pushing once again into Fudge, which is so terrible to see from his point of view. It's just so difficult for him. 700 gold behind right now. Cloud9 are focused is more down towards this bottom side, but Baba is going to reset. Could work his way up towards the top. 
with the uh, Rift Herald available for Steel, though, perhaps they'll try and get some gold into, you know, Arya's pockets. We saw how deadly he could be on this LeBlanc in game four of the day, or five of the day? Game five of the day. That that Rift Herald is not being set up. That Rift Herald is just going to be dropped into a lane, and he's going to say, you know what, here you go, do with it what, <laughs> what you can, because the setup is just not going to be there. Movement is already coming out from Vulcan as well, as roaming supports coming through with this one, and... Yeah, I mean, second Rift Hell is, is almost up again in two to three minutes. And yeah, he's just going to have to place it in the mid lane here because it's running out now. I mean, he actually might have a tiny window here where you can get a few plates out of it. Rift Hell is going to come down. You can see Perks on his way, but this should charge in. One plate already down in the mid lane. Aria will nice. try and pick up the gold. Get the auto attack on the tower to make sure you pick up the gold. But there's the supreme display of talent into the solar flare. Flash across the wall. Gang going in as well. He has to flash away. And the Rift Herald is a bit of a bait here as C9. Look to take the fight. Chains, Chains coming out. Gang caught up. Does have that unbreakable will. Has popped it. Damage reduction is not enough. And C9, 5-1 to one up in their rematch versus DFM. Nicely done by Perks, finding that extra chain to get the kill onto Gang. And while the Rift Hell was, you know, beyond expectations from Detonation Focus Me, the, the fight that came through from Cloud9 was just way better. And you know what? They can continue with this one. Stacked wave on the top lane, bot lane Perks is... Trying to duel him as well. Man, Perks is everywhere right now. Deadly Flourish goes wide. Perks is able to dodge away from it. Yeah. Curtain calls to clear the wave. It's uh, relatively common practice when you are behind like this. And the wave will push in towards the tower. Perks could try and hold it. And he does just outside of that turret's range. And we are heading into the replay again. So here we go once again. Rift Hell, summon up Aria. Too busy dashing in to get there. I, I, the miscommunication oh. really here coming through from Detonation Focus Me. Aria wants to get the gold from the plates. And then Steel, just thinking he finally found a pick, just walking right into Blapper and Vulcan. Yeah, it just feels a little bit greedy all around from Steel there. Going in for some extra damage after you put the Rift Hell down. Uh, gives up two kills over to C9, who were ready and waiting to pounce. And we talked about Vulcan's ability on engaged champions, where we saw his ability to roam around and read the map well there, as he was in the right position at the right time. Now, we've seen a lot of misfortune today, Medic. We have. But we haven't seen Kraken Slayer misfortune yet. We've seen Gale, Gale Force, Force, and then we've seen Eclipse with Yumi's Ghostblade. But Kraken Slayer now coming into this one as well. And it's interesting to see the team's different takes on, on how you really want to play this. Uh, Lethality obviously have been nerfed on this patch as well, so can be what goes into the thought process when you have Epi and the front line moving forward, that you just want to put, output as much damage as you can with your auto attack. Press the attack has also been opted in by Sven. I think it's always dependent on who you're going to be focusing in a fight, that right? Sense. Who is Misfortune going to attack? Probably the Gnar who's in her face. Who is going to die on the back line? Well, Irelia can jump onto Udipon. Irelia can try and do damage to Steel. Irelia can get onto Gang as well sometimes in these fights. So you don't need that sort of lethality to burst squishy targets from the MF. Instead, Kraken Slayer to work your way through the tankier ones makes sense overall. Sven currently working his way through this mid lane tier one. No towers have fallen as of yet, but C9 still at the 15 minute mark are 3,000 gold ahead. I think they have the setup for it though. Top lane being pushed in, half HP. Mid lane being pushed in, half HP. Second Drake has respawned as well. And despite Cloud9 being up towards the top side, with the mid lane priority that Sven and Vulcan has, Detonation Focus Me just doesn't dare going for the Drake instead because they're too afraid of the collapse. Fudge still has that TP, Blapper not too far away. And there we go, Rift Hell has been summoned up. So you said no turret has been taken. Well, Medic, I present to you a fall in mid lane. You're just too damn smart, man. You just you just understand it way too much for me as the retail goes down to the <laughs> of the game. <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyways, objective control from Cloud9 in general has been better this Much game from better. that we usually see. Like, this early Drake stacking wasn't something we saw in playoffs from Cloud9. So, with them finally getting this lead with their laners, they're actually utilizing it much better than what we previously saw from them. Yeah, and with this sort of play, C9 definitely putting themselves up there at the top of Group B would make a beeline to groups instead of having to fight in a knockout match if they can get that first spot and every single win counts towards it. 4,000 gold now, the lead for Cloud9. Fudge already got his Blade of the Ruin King. Blab has already got Gore Drinker. Everfrost is complete on perks. Watch Fudge out. steps forward, trading to Gang. He's going to try and trade in here. The Flawless Chouette hits onto two, dashing around, but 
he just can't survive against the three members of DFM. First World Four. You know, I understand it. It completely changed the tempo of the game up towards top lane because no one has been up to help Abby. Yep. So for Fudge, you feel quite comfortable walking forward just because you've kind of realized no one's been able to help him so far. Um, but they are finding a nice pick because of that. Is it going to bring them back into the game? Not necessarily. And Abby still receiving a lot of pressure. Perks is up here to, t to clear the wave with the TP. And they can even threaten a dive and try to take down the top lane turret with the, m m the numbers of members they have up here. Definitely have a numbers advantage. Vulcan could look to go across the wall here. Of course, remember, he can't see the fact that those recalls are being challenged channeled over there. Perks will be able to take this tier one in the top lane and C9 continue to assert their dominance across the map. Two, well, three and a half thousand gold ahead for them. And uh, Ari is just trying to get some gold back in his own pockets. And if DFM are going to look to anyone, you have to be looking to Aria right now because Jin's going to struggle to work his way through an Aurelia and through a Leona and through a Kiana as the game goes on. Aria could look for the burst potential. Oh, no, Ebby! Uh, Ebby, Ebby, Ebby. Oi, oi, oi. Solar Flare flashed away from Perks on the chase as well. And that's actually two flashes expended for the price of one. He gets out, but the problem is right now that the reset has been coming through. You're not strong enough at Detimation Focus Me to force anything else on the map. So while Arya is pushing in a bot lane turret, the tier 2 turret is worth way more gold and you open up such a huge portion of the map. So as class 9 now, you can get the tempo advantage with the reset, you can push in the mid lane on the next one, and then you try to do the same towards the bottom side of the map. And Ebby, he's just, I mean, he's just gonna look there, he's just gonna continue to be a weakness of Detonation Focus Me with the pressure Cloud9 has been accepted. Yeah, the thing with that is, like, Abby is the weakness, but it's not his fault. Like, he's, yeah. he's just been focused I mean, oh, so okay. much. So to one extent, he misplayed the level one in top lane. That's he true. took way too much damage that is and true. was forced to TP early. That is on him. Yeah, now, that's... what happens afterwards, it's kind of tough to say, right? The just been permaganged in both his games so far. Imagine coming to Worlds and then being like, okay, here's Nah. Just have your ultimate in team fights. That's all we want you to do. You can stay on top lane. Five players from the enemy team will gank you. C9 have shut him down systematically, totally, completely. It's been an annihilation of Evie's will to play League of Legends in this game. And he's still within 30 CS and you know he has his ultimate for a team fight. Yeah, so. honestly, I, I looked at his score, I was like, wow, only two times? Because it, it feels to me like he yeah. could have died at least four uh, with the amount of pressure that Cloud9 has been excelling. Now, Baronov spawning is one minute, and with the camp respawns coming through on the top side of the map, with the big wave, or big lane they actually have rather now, where they can just push the enemy off detonation focus me so far behind, there's nothing DFM can do to control their own jungle. If they walk too far forward here, they'll just get run down. They have no safety of towers. You see both top laners showing you how you should play weak side right there. Ebby steps forward, realizes everyone's on this side of the map, backs away. Fudge was doing his wolves, and then he just decided to back away while three members of DFM were waiting for him in that bot lane bush. C9 have control of the top side of the map, and DFM don't really have reciprocal control of the bottom side. Usually you'd expect the weak side to have, you know, more wards from DFM pushed up wards into that blue buff area, but they haven't been able to get any of that deep vision, instead investing their control wards in defensive vision in their own jungle. It just feels like they have to as well, just in terms of if Cloud9 finally walks forward, you at least have the cheese potential or the CC potential to try and one-shot someone with the LeBlanc or the CC chain of an Alistar. And you can see they are doing their best to try and keep their jungle for themselves, just trying to get these buffs. But the problem is right now, you're investing so much in that singular blue buff on the top side, and Cloud9, they're going to be looking down towards the bot lane instead now. So they They've completely forgot about top side. They're pushing in mid, they're pushing in bot, and they're gonna try and trim your red side jungle away. Yeah, and what this does as well is makes DFM invest oracles, makes them invest control wards towards exactly. that top side. With Dragon coming up in 18 seconds time, C9 now know that DFM don't have those resources to regain control of the bottom side jungle. C9 should be able to take this infernal Dragon for pretty much free, unless DFM call them out and say, hey, you have to come to Baron, because we might be doing it. Even if they do Baron, they have a LeBlanc. They have a Jin. Like, it, it, those are not two good carries. Yeah, but they've got this a... Nah, man. He's got Sunderer. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't think it's going to help them in this case. And now with all outer turrets being removed by Cloud9 from the Tenacious Focus Wim, uh, Focus Me, rather, with them picking up the Infernal right now, putting them on Soul Point, DFM is on a timer. Yeah. 100%. Infernal Soul with an MF, with an Aurelia, with a Kiana, with a Silas. That is deadly, deadly, deadly. 
And the question is, can DFM find a way to fight against it? I will say as well, what I've enjoyed watching this game is Perks having a relatively good performance on this side. So at MSI, I think he was actually a weak link of C9. I think he had a, a poor performance overall. Fudge really was the standout star for them. And here, 2-0-2 on this Silas. Was focused a little in the early game, did get some reciprocal pressure from his team in the early game, but he's having a, a solid game one of Worlds 2021. Also, he seems more selfless in terms of he came in as the mid laner before and wasn't too afraid of having his jungle proximity with Blapper around him. It seems like they've made an adaptation now where he's fine with moving down towards the bottom side. Yeah. He's fine with moving up towards the top side. Not not only when he has prior, but also losing waves for it, netting his teammate, and that takes some trust. Fudge going to be jumped on here, TP coming in this Vanguard's edge as well, and Fudge turns it back around. C9 were waiting for this, they were lying in wait. DFM invests a ton into the top lane, but the Narbrinks are not back. It's another double for Perks as he goes 4-0-2 so far in the game, he's looking to make it 5. Gankord out, it's a triple for the C9 mid laner. Perks makes a statement on his return to Worlds. And now I finally think we can put Baron on the table, Vulcan or Fudge rather, coming in from the mid lane as well to clean up the mid, mid lane minion wave. And no one, realistically speaking, should be able to contest this Baron. They should put Cloud9 in a very favorable position, not only going into taking down the tier twos, but also towards the soul that is respawning in three minutes. With the Baron taken 23 minutes in, Cloud9 have a wealth of options for them. Let's watch how they made this play happen in the Axe Effect replay. Yeah, so you can see Detonation focused me. They're trying to go for the same kind of play that netted them a kill on towards Forge earlier, but this time around, the rest of Cloud9, they are ready for it. And now, once again, we see how a Silas pick really works well into the competition of Detonation Focus me. There's so much value. You can steal away the Nar ultimate, you can steal away the Alistar ultimate, and a triple kill for perks there is just suitable for his performance in this game. <laughs> Look at the damage he was putting down. He had upon nowhere near that last fray in the top lane. 8,000, well, 7,000 and a bit gold lead now for Perks as he goes in. Unbreakable will stolen away from the Alistair. Anything you can do, Perks can do better right now as they push in the mid lane. C9 looking to close this one out. Lickety split. It's the inhibitor tower falls as well. Ebby continues to push in the side lane. He does have TP, but how much are you going to give up for Ebby to get at least a little bit more gold? Inhibitor in the mid lane for C9. Just want to close this one out as quickly as they can, let's be honest, because Ebby continues to not be with the team, and they've jumped onto Gang. Perks with the Unbreakable World will match Gangs of his own. Supreme Display of Talent misses Aria. Gang still alive. C9 now looking to dive, as Aria has to jump away. Second inhibitor, their next target. And this is one of the things with C9, they're so effective with that Baron power play. We've seen it so many times. Their issues in the past used to be, oh, we can't get Baron. But this time around, against the Tenation, Focus Me, completely revitalized, refreshing Cloud9, coming in with the breeze here. Cloud9, one of the best teams in North America with Baron buff, as you say, continue to gain control of the game. They've ended 13 games with Baron in the LCS in the regular season. First of any team in NA. And we'll see if they can continue that feat here. They have taken two inhibitors, a minute left on the Baron, so it might be a little bit tight if they're going to finish it out. But right now, they are gaining total control of this game, really not giving DFM an option to get back. No, and the thing is as well, one minute, then you have the Infernal Soul respawning. The, the pressure is just on. Detonation, focus me. If you don't find a pick now, you just lose the game. Yep. If Cloud9 secures that Infernal Soul, there's nothing you can do to come back. Your team fighting doesn't rivals them. Epi is too far behind. No one's actually ahead right now in Destination Focus Me. It has been a stomp by Cloud9 so far. Absolute domination by North America's third seed as they continue to look to finish this one off. DFM needs something miraculous. Need something forward from Ahat as Gang goes in. Supreme display of talent disengages him. The Solar Flare coming out as well. No unbreakable will on that Alistair. No ult for him as the jump wow. comes in from Perks into the nine to the stopwatch. Crescent Guard tries to catch Perks out, but he's able to get away for the moment. Flashes out. Ebby gets the stun onto one blabber will for DFM. Have one kill in this fight so far. Curtain call coming out as well as Fudge is forced away. Aria jumping in. Fudge low. Aria will dash back out. And that's the closest you're going to get a destination focus me as a success. You trade your support for the enemy jungler, which obviously pays some dividends going into this next Infernal Drake. But your problem right now is that there's still loads of super minions pushing into, uh, into your base. The tempo advantage is still on Cloud9. Fudge even TPing in to steal some waves to start off this Drake. And Detonation focus me. That, that team fight seemed like it had to be it, but they just 
didn't have enough gold. They didn't have the resources to fulfill that fight. C9 just in such a strong position right now. You, as you say, like, if DFM were within 8,000 gold, perhaps they could have done something more this fight, but it's just so difficult for them. Gang goes in. I love the disengage with the Keanu ult. Yeah, it's super creative as well. You don't have to go for this super big flash. You want perks, on the other hand, he has to. And because of him dashing in like that on the Alistar, it does leave Flapper open in a bit when he dashes in, and Ebi gets to show his own ultimate. Fudge on the other side trying to duel out, but can't really get inside. And once the curtain call has called out, well, the, the, the show has ended, right? So there's not much more to get from it. But now they do have the Infernal Soul and they do have every single resource they need to close out this game now. Yes, this is what a wild cast versus a major region should look like. Cloud9, 9,000 gold ahead right now. Wow. DF, well, I mean, <laughs> it's domination from Cloud9. It's, it's def it's I can't speak against that. You completely Very true. Lic Licorice said it best, you know, all those years ago. Cloud9 marching their way into the base of DFM. Of course, you know, even if you lose this, you still very much have a chance of making it to groups. You've beaten out... Uh, Unicorns. Unicorns, thank you. Earlier on today, we're still in a very strong position to make it to the knockout stage, but C9 are vying for that first spot, and Aria once again vying to die. Second death this summer on the LeBlanc as the chase goes on. Ebi forced away towards the top side. He's going to nab and not get a stun perks. Diving double Nexus is into three, and he's just too damn tanky. You just can't kill him. Gang will fall. Perks gets another double, and C9 announce themselves on the world stage with a win versus a DFM. They're going to play with food a little bit on the Nexus here. Unipon forced back. The minions will do the work for Cloud9 as the curtain call comes out. And His Vulcan own curtain will call. <laughs> Counter curtain call. Perks can't no. hit the target. Nexus falls. Cloud9 with the win. If this detonation focused me was the, you know, revitalized version with Exodia coming in and Cloud9 made this statement of a game. You're happy as a yep. North American fan. This was the team that made the memes of Blapper's flash into the scuttle. And if you wanted to diminish those expectations going forward, you completely did it with this stomp. And it's just so momentum building as well for Cloud9. Like, if you lose the first game, you only have three more to really set yourself in a good spot. If you can consistently win, you avoid Hanwha, you avoid LNG, you put yourself in so much of an easier position to make it through to groups unscathed.